Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how I built a witch's treehouse in The Sims 4. This treehouse is built on an island with a pond surrounding it and has a secret bridge for entry. This cozy treehouse is a perfect hidden oasis for your spellcaster to relax and practice magic. Now to start I had to pick a tree and I really liked this one because it had a very cool look to it and I really liked the curve of the tree. I knew that I could work with that for this build. Now you want to go ahead and place a room as your base and then go ahead and place as many levels as you're going to want this build to have. I was not really sure how many levels I was going to have so I started with two and went from there. Now, it's really important that you delete the walls and the floor of the very first room that you place because then that'll give you that elevated look. Then I decided that I wanted to have a third level that was going to be my witch's kind of spell casting area. I was originally thinking that I wanted this to be kind of a tower type look, so I wanted to go with a circular room. And then on the second floor, I decided to curve the wall on that side as well to give it a nice finished curved look all the way through. Next, I went around and placed a few walls just to represent what I was going to have a wraparound porch be. Then after placing some stairs and getting the porch going, I decided to tackle the roof, which was such a pain. This was definitely the most difficult roof I have ever done. It took hours to complete because I kept having to redo sections. I couldn't get sections to match up. It was a complete mess. Then I finally got it to a good point and decided to move to the tower, which was another challenge in itself. I tried so many different shapes and nothing that I was doing was seeming to work or match up. So I kind of started to go with this like pill type of shape where I was gonna round it and that started to seem to work. So I was able to take a gabled roof and round it, then take two circular roofs place those next to each other and round those as well with having the gabled roof in the middle. This was definitely looking pretty weird as I was going along, but at this point I had already spent so much time on the first section of the roof that I was just ready to get something good going. Then I really wanted to make it a glass roof because I thought it would be really amazing to have the same idea that I had in the greenhouse, but when I did the glass roof, there was just too many weird things happening. So we just went with a regular roof. And if I hadn't tortured myself already enough, I decided to do the rest. And I'm going to spare you the, again, hours that it took me to try and figure this out. Next was to add supports around the treehouse to actually make it look realistic. I just went ahead and placed them around all of the corners of the porch. Then that's when I had the great idea to make it an island. So I went ahead and raised up the center terrain and then I went around the exterior to lower the terrain and added some water. This took me a little bit of time to kind of play around with the terrain tools, mostly because I'm pretty new with the terrain tools. I hadn't really worked with them much before, so this took a lot of experimentation for me. But I just kind of went around and raised and lowered where I thought it would look natural, where I knew that I would want to add trees in later, and then again just carrying it all around because I really wanted it to have kind of a moat type feeling. Then I decided to start on the bridge and this was a huge challenge as well. I ended up having to redo this so many times. I initially was going to have it in the front but then I decided that I didn't want it to be in the front. I wanted it to come from the back because I was going to be surrounding the entire thing with trees and foliage. I really wanted it to be hidden to where if you were to see it from the road, you'd 
see just this house peeking through the trees and you wouldn't necessarily know how to get to it. So it's very secret, very serene. You'll also notice in the final build that I end up having the walkway come onto the island as opposed to walking onto a platform as I initially designed it. It seriously took me so long to do the walkway and the bridge and all of that that I decided not to include it in this video, but if you guys want me to post a full video of the exterior and the landscaping to show my process for that, I definitely can do it. Just leave me a comment and let me know. And then I decided to take the terrain paint and add a rock look throughout the bottom of the pond. I wanted it to look very natural, so I did rocks all around. I also ended up putting some of the rock terrain paint around the edges too, because I thought there would be some pieces where it was still rock, some places the grass was kind of growing into it. So I just honestly just played around with it. Then just adding some more supports. I didn't want there to be too many supports underneath because the house is actually supported by the tree and I wanted to place a lot of foliage underneath as well so that it really looked kind of unkempt and forest-like. And finally adding beams and supports up to the second level as well. Now for the interior. I usually try to start putting doors and windows in first because then I know where I can place my furniture and I won't have anything blocking the windows. I usually also try to start with my kitchen because as they say, the kitchen is the heart of the home. For this build, I wanted to stick with paranormal, realm of magic, werewolves, and vampires as my main packs that I was using for the aesthetic. So I decided to use the Realm of Magic countertops and stove and fridge for this because I really did like kind of the ornate design that they presented. I really don't like when there's that gap in between the fridge and the counters, so I usually always fix that. Then I updated the fireplace to give it again another ornate type of feeling, and then I wanted her to have a reading area because I feel like most wizards and witches are very well read and they have a lot of spell books and different tomes and things like that so this witch was going to have a whole library with a little seating area so i definitely used the new book nook kit to use the bookcases that are perfect that they clip together and there's so many fun swatches with some empty shelves, shelves that have space to add decor. And there was a little bit of issues with the clipping, but it just took a little bit of finessing to get them all to clip together. And of course, what is a reading area without a window to look outside? So I had to include a cute little window overlooking her backyard. From here, I'll usually put in some lighting just so that I can really start to set the tone and get some decorations as well. I really wanted to have a cute little entryway, so I added in a nice table and then just started adding more decor items, again, using those main packs to really give that witchy feel. Um, you are going to see some of these wood blocks where the tree was at because I was noticing that at certain camera angles the tree would disappear and I wanted to be able to maintain that look of having wood mostly for building but then if you were in live mode and the tree disappeared you'd remember oh this isn't just a blank space there's a tree here. And of course what would a Sims 4 kitchen be without some open shelving? I always like to include this antique tea kettle on the stove of pretty much all of my builds because it still leaves it functional and I think it's just a really cute little add-on. When you're placing items on shelves that don't already pre-clip into slots, you can use the 9 and 0 keys to raise up the items and press Alt to enable free builds so that you can place them wherever you want to on the shelf.
One of my favorite items to use lately is a nectar glass from Debug. It is from the Dine Out pack, and when you place it into the world, it shows up as an empty nectar glass. So you can use this as your glassware in your kitchen. And finally, it would not be a witch's kitchen without some herbs drying. I really wanted to keep the dining area simple since it was such a small space. So I sized down this rug and decided to center it with the fireplace, which also ended up kind of centering it in the room. I was playing around with the idea of having four chairs, but I felt that this witch was kind of more secluded, so she might only have one guest over at a time. And the main level is complete. For the bathroom, I wanted her to have a walk-in step-up shower with a seat. So I drew a fence to create my area and then raised up the platform. I did this again for the seat area as well, and then also decided to add one that would sit next to the bathtub that she could place her spa stuff on. Then I placed in the tub that I wanted and decided to change the color swatch as well. This little platform allowed me to place some spa essentials and some towels, which I thought was very handy for the bathtub. You can also now place items on your bathtub. There are some slots that will clip in, but you can also place them on the edges as well. For the shower, I wanted some tall walls, but I didn't want them to go all the way to the ceiling, and then I ended up putting in a glass door with a couple of windows. Bathroom clutter is one of my favorite parts of building, but I'm not a fan of how they always clip into the slots. So what I'll usually do is move the counter out of the way and then just grab the item using alt you can free place it wherever you want and it'll stay at the same height. Then when you're finished just move the counter back into its original place. And with that the bathroom is complete. I definitely had some trouble deciding how I wanted to set up the bedroom so I ended up just going with a lot of plants and I ended up using these really beautiful windows from Realm of Magic but for some reason when I placed them on the corner they did this weird shadow thing. But anyways lots of plants and this is where I had to get really creative with the bed. Because it was a very small space, I was running out of options as far as where I was gonna be able to place a bed. I already had it on a platform, and I started playing around with this idea of having it actually built into the wall. So I created these little cutouts, and then once I moved that wall back, it actually clipped inside of the wall. I didn't wanna have any dead space where I had put those little square rooms at, so I decided to delete those walls and I would use them for the closet. I initially had them as half walls, but I decided that I wanted to go full walls instead, which I think really ended up finishing off the look. And I also added in these little built-in sconces into the bedding area so that she had some lighting and it wasn't too dark. And more plants because you can never have enough plants using the nine and zero keys to raise them up and the bracket keys to make plants smaller. Then for the closet, I was really struggling with what to do here, so I kind of just caved and ended up doing a couple of dressers and armoires. And of course a mirror. And then some more open shelving. I was initially thinking shoes, but I ended up just placing some decor items on there. For the closet, I didn't want it to just be this open space, so I decided to have it be a curtain that would kind of cover the open doorway. To do this, I just created a wall, and then I was able to place the curtain where I wanted on the wall using the Alt key. Then after that, I deleted the wall, and I grabbed this beam from Cottage Living and used the 9 key to raise it up to look like a wood support going across that the curtain was connected to. Finally, for her little witch's layer I knew that I had to have a cauldron in here so that was going to be my main focus. From here I just started placing decor items as I found them. I found this really cute shelving that already had a plant on it so I decided to add some potions, a specter buddy, a statue, just to kind of add to the look and feel. 
I also added some more bookcases up here because I thought she might have some extra bookcases. Because of the curve of the wall, I added a large shelf across the top just to give it a finished look. This is the fireplace that I could not get to work, so someone please check that out and let me know if you can get it to work. And again, some more beautiful windows and decor. This is mainly where I just placed a lot of decor because I really felt like that was the whole look and feel of being a witch is all of your fun oddities and, and potions and, and everything that you use in your day-to-day -day life as a witch. Another idea that I've had for a build is to do like a witch's apothecary, but unfortunately I don't feel like there's really enough items built into The Sims that would allow for that to happen. Because I feel like having a little, even just a little mini apothecary here in her witch's lair would be perfect. Just so many jars filled with all of her herbs and just we need to make that happen. So this build is on the gallery and you can find it by either searching Witch's Treehouse or bugging in my gallery ID. It is on a 30 by 20 lot and comes in at 67,914 simoleons. If you've made it with me this far, please like and subscribe. And if you have any ideas for builds, please put them in the comments because I definitely would love to take some ideas and see what I can create for you guys. Thanks friends, see you soon.